hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in case, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. May God add a blessing to our hearing of this God's holy word, the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, prepare our hearts and open our ears and open our eyes that we may see and hear the word that you have for us today, and that it will take deep root within us so that we might grow strong for you in the garden which you have planted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some time ago, I shared with you the story of my very own first garden. I had worked in my father's vegetable garden as a boy. Mostly, I remember shoveling. He would come up to me and say, John, let's add about two feet around the edges. Shake the dirt off the grass and break up the clods. That's what I remember from being young in the garden on the side of the house. But the radishes next to the sidewalk in front of apartment 32 Banker Road in Norfolk, Virginia, that was my very own garden. And I took care of that garden. I surrounded them with marigolds because I had heard that marigolds drove the bugs away. And I wanted those radishes to be fruitful. Although neither Jane nor I really like radishes, but they were easy to grow. They were were good seeds and they sprung up quickly. Uh, This was during my intern year when I was in seminary, and I was campus minister for the Methodists and the Presbyterians at Old Dominion University. So so some of what I was doing was um, sharing seeds of faith with inquiring minds um, on the campus there over in Norfolk. After seminary, I started church in Virginia Beach, and Um, In in case you don't know, Virginia Beach is located in an area where you can almost have two crops of some vegetables planting early in the spring like February and then late in fall. And so you harvest around Thanksgiving, you harvest around May and then harvest again around Thanksgiving. Well, in Virginia Beach, we were uh, in a rented house and there wasn't much land and I didn't want to dig up the owner's yard, so I found a spot of dirt around the HVAC unit out back, and I planted potatoes there. And then out front near the driveway, there was a patch of of clear dirt at the the foot of a big oak tree, and so I planted um, okra amidst Jane's daisies there, out by the driveway. That's where I kept the okra. When we moved to the church house, and after our oldest daughter Sarah was born, we planted a 10-foot by 20-foot garden. And uh, after that first summer, so her second summer, she was born in June, so the second June after her first birthday, I would sit her in her diapers and her little t-shirt in the garden with her hat on, and, and she would watch me weed or pick vegetables at first. And, and by the end of the summer, she was uh, maneuvering on her own, and she, she found her way over to what I think is the best miniature tomato ever, called Sweet 100. She found her way over to the Sweet 100 pot- tomatoes, which were ripening as we gardened. And as soon as they turned orange, if they were red, she'd pick them and eat them, but if they had a hint of orange in them, she would eat them too. So by the end of the summer, She did turn out to be vegetarian after a while, too. I didn't say that. She hated vegetables all her growing up years, then became a vegetarian. You never know what seeds you plant will 
how they'll turn out. So by the end of the summer, almost everything that we picked, green beans and the sweet 100s and, and other vegetables, I think we had eggplant and green peppers, a lot of it was never made it into the house. You know, while you're hoeing the rows, you need a little sustenance along the way. And she would get into everything. We were so excited, that's Sarah and I, we were so excited about the results of our seed planting that when Jane came uh, late in the summer, she came out to the garden late in one summer, I said, honey, let's add about two feet around the garden. You shake the dirt off the grass and break up the clods, and Sarah and I will plant the seeds. And I think that's when we planted... Uh, Broccoli. Broccoli would grow, uh, and you could harvest it before frost came. So as I was reading the scripture this week, I'm reminded of, of these life stories of seed planting. And, and perhaps, um, perhaps you could say that uh, these stories of seed planting are, are parables about our lives. Uh, in our quote for today, Malcolm Mugridge reminds us that every happening great and small, is a, a parable whereby God speaks to us. And uh, our task, the art of our life, is, is to get the message. Isn't that what Jesus was saying? He, he tells his stories in parables, and, and our chore and our task and ultimately our reward comes in how we interpret these parables. Driving to, the hospital, to a hospital visit in Dayton Friday, I couldn't miss the fields uh, along the way with uh, corn just almost tasseling out and, and foot-high beans along some of the roads. Look around you. How many planted fields did you see on the way to worship today? That short drive that we made, passing by one field or another, helps us as we enter the Gospel of Matthew today at the point of the parable of the sower. And the story itself takes us beyond the planting to the harvesting. In a way, it, it presents the, the whole picture in, in, in one kind of frame. There's, there's the planting, and there's the growing, and there's the harvesting, and it's all assumed in in these 23 verses. The Gospel of Matthew not only tells the story, uh, which you find in the Gospel of Mark, about the sower throwing the seeds out, uh, but also provides what the early Christians were beginning to do, and with their interpretation, provides us with Jesus' interpretation of what kind of, what each type of soil meant. And, and how people, how this related to people like us, like people uh, in Matthew's church in that day, like the Christians who would have been reading that story for the first time. So we're offered also not just the parable, but also an explanation of what the parable means. So what do we learn? How are we at sowing seeds so that others will grow in discipleship. Glory be and praise to God. It seems like we're pretty good at sowing seeds of children here in this congregation. A few weeks ago, we saw about 30, uh, 25, between 25 and 30 youth up here singing after their mission trip. The week before, we commissioned them on their way. This week, We'll be sowing seeds in, in vacation Bible school. How are we at sowing seeds so that others will grow in discipleship? A question to keep asking ourselves as, as time moves on and as day passes day. We sow seeds of the kingdom in our children when we share our faith with them, when we serve neighbors in need with them. We grow in God's spirit with them. 
we are tending a garden here. Uh, I was thinking earlier, this isn't in my sermon, but I was thinking, yeah, we're all in pews like the little rows in a field. And maybe, maybe I need to work the pews with a hoe over some over here a little bit and get those seeds sprouting up some more. We're tending a garden here, and the growth that we see is a gift of God. It's a gift to us, and it's our own gift to them. Along the way, there may be challenges, so persevere. It may be a task too difficult at times or seem that way. Be patient. Do we have the gifts required, we might ask, as many churches are today? Do we have the gifts required? Pray. David Lose, in his commentary this week, in his blog, in the meantime, says this. He says, yet when we get to Jesus' interpretation of the generosity or wastefulness of the sower, remember, the sower is just out there. You can almost picture him happily skipping through all sorts of soil, planting, planting seeds out by the HVAC or out at the roots of an oak tree or, or in a garden this wide by a sidewalk. And you wonder what will become of those seeds. But, but here we have a long history of, of working the soil and of making it deep and rich and fertile. And so we have every reason to expect God's yield to be more than we expect. Instead, he continues, the focus is almost entirely shifted to the soil in the second part of our reading, drawing the analogy between different qualities of soil and different kinds of believers. And the implication seems to be relatively clear that we should pray and strive, uh, and he cites a hymn to borrow the words of Han Hansen, uh, who has a lovely and simple hymn. I looked it up, it's just, uh, it's, I could only find it in a Lutheran hymnal, um, and I did not know the tune or a else I would uh, ask Keith to come up and sing it for us here today. Uh, but the words go like this, and it sounds like a prayer. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart be good soil. After praying this kind of prayer, Los gets into the hurdles that, that we can find in our time and place and culture, and, and it's nothing new what he says, but I want to, to share with you what he says. He says, and this is what strikes me just this week, that is with the sower and the seed, we live in a time and a place where we often feel like there is never enough. Time of scarcity. He doesn't use that word, that's mine. Not enough money or clean water or fresh air or fuel or security or happiness or prestige. Well, you name it, he says. Sometimes this feeling comes from the ads we watch or are subjected to on television, radio, uh, and the internet ads that strive to create in us a sense of lack or inadequacy that the particular product being advertised can fill. And sometimes this feeling comes from the politicians who, whether hailing from the left or the right or the middle, follow a similar strategy by naming what is wrong, what is lacking, what we should fear, and then offering themselves as a solution to our problems. While this strategy is effective, he says, for both advertisers and politicians, it has the effect of creating in us a profound sense of scarcity and inadequacy, eventually making us to believe not only that we do not have enough, but ultimately that we are not enough. 
Don't ever let it be said of this congregation and its children that we let them grow up thinking that they are not enough. The memories of gardens past and our sheer shared ministry in the present means so much to me. This parable has, the, has power for me, and I hope it does for you too. When I see God as the sower, the parable becomes clear. Again, Lowe says, God does not hold back. God is not worried about whether there will be enough seed or grace or love. God may want our hearts to be good soil, but nevertheless hurls a ridiculous amount of seed even on dry and thorny and beaten soil. Goodness. But you get the feeling this God would probably scatter seed, love, mercy, grace in a parking lot. Why? Because there is enough. And ultimately, because God believes we are enough. Enough to save ourselves? No. Enough to deserve love, dignity, and respect? Absolutely. From radishes to the kingdom, may our prayer be, Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil. Amen. Looking ahead in the whole picture to the harvest, our hymn is 551, Come Ye Thankful People Come, 551.
Please be seated. And let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your presence in our midst. We thank you for all those times when your presence feels like rain in due season. It helps morning glories and carrots and sunflowers and peace plants and okra grow. We thank you for your mercy to us that falls upon our shoulders like, like grace needed in, in the midst of challenges and, and troubles. So be gracious to us always. We thank you for your presence with us that sometimes falls on us and feels like love. Your love shown to us in Jesus Christ, but also the love of others. The love of a community that bears one another's burdens, that shares in life together. So we ask that you Bless this community, O God, as we seek to be faithful to our calling from you to be servants to one another and servants to all and to love neighbor as self. We pray for all of those who who find themselves in a position of decision-making or or leadership that, that they might seek the common good and do those things that are beneficial to to all. We pray, O oh God, for your world today, for those places where there is not enough sowers and there is not enough seed, and there is hunger amongst your people. We pray for those places where there is not enough shelter and there are refugees and homelessness in the midst of your people. We pray for those places, O God, where one seeks to lord it over another through the use of power and violence. We pray for reconciliation, but we pray especially that those who are victims might find peace in your power and your presence, in your love and your grace, and in your mercy to them and with them. So, O oh God, be with us today in this congregation as we seek to continue to, to grow in grace. Continue to, to work this garden, O oh God, that the fruit which we produce might speak of the fruits of your Spirit through our living and through our giving to one another, and to all. We make this prayer in the name of that one who was willing to share his life and lay it down for those whom he loved, even our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the presence, and the kingdom, and the power forever. Amen. As a sign of our response to the love and mercy of Jesus Christ in our midst, and God, our Creator, present and power in the world, let us present our tithes and our offerings to our God.
ask that you receive this offering as an expression of our life and our love given to you for the sowing of the seeds of faith here and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our ending hymn is a hymn, We Plow the Fields and Scatter, and I hadn't sung that hymn in my whole ministry until I found we could also sing it to the day of resurrection or tell it out abroad. So you know the tune, sing along. These are great words for the scripture this Sunday. Number 560, We Plow the Fields and Scatter to the Tune Lancashire. A word of thanks to all those who came out to yesterday to uh, help in the work day. Um, bushes have been trimmed, hand railings have been uncovered, holes in ceilings have been fixed, and our giving corner is about to be established. If you go out this way, want, look for the fresh paint on, on the alley door. As you make your way out the doors, and as you go your way this week, sow the seeds of faith, sow them deep within your own heart, and sow them in the community, and may the Lord bless you and keep you, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, may the Lord be turning his face towards you and grant you peace, now and in all the days to come, amen. Thank you. As you find your seats, I invite our boys and girls to come forward, please. Our boys and girls to come forward, please. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, we need the kids, yeah. Our young men and young women to come forward, please. 
Uh, are there any more? Uh, well, I know. Don't. Well, no calling names. No calling names. Uh, Joe, why don't you come forward? And Keith, you come forward too. Yes, you come forward. Yeah. I need at least five here. Okay, good. Scoot over, guys. So the, the, we're going to talk about plants this morning. We have some bigger plants here. The scripture this morning is about the sower and the seed, and I've been thinking about seeds all week. And one of the seeds that I love are sunflower seeds, because you can plant them and they grow into to flowers um, like this. If you were watching the Tour de France this week, the bicyclers were going through, a, through um, fields and fields of sunflowers that were just big with the, with the big brown face and the, the yellow rays coming out from the side. And somebody's yard here in Eaton has those great big tall sunflowers that, that are almost as, well, taller than me. I'm looking around to see who's taller than I am in here. Well, I don't see, uh, I don't see anybody so much taller, except, oh, that's right, Nevin, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he's taller than I am, okay. He's a big sunflower. And I've been thinking about being a seed. And so I think if I were going to be a seed, I'd want to be a sunflower seed today. This is a plant that we keep on our front porch, and every morning I get to see it grow out. And um, Keith, I'm going to say you're a seed from a peace plant since you sung about let there be peace on earth today. So you'll be a, a plant with green leaves and put out those white flag kind of flowers. Joe, what kind of seed would you like to be today? A vegetable seed. How about okra? That'll fit into my sermon later. Okra will be good. Okay. Um, what kind of seed would you like to be? A morning glory. Yes, indeed. That's a good seed. A carrot seed. Uh huh. A sunflower too. Oh, good. Well, you, we can be in the same garden together. Well, you know, when you plant the seeds. You have to get out the, the hoe and, you know, you dig around it and maybe you put the seed in and the morning glory seed and dig around that one and put the carrot in and dig around there and put the sunflower and, and uh, the, you have a whole seed pod with a peace plant. So we'll dig around and put the whole seed pod in and see what we get there. And, and then the okra seed we'll put in there. And then, what else do you have to do when you plant a seed? Water it, right? Okay. <laughs> now put out your hand. I'm just going to water you a little bit today. Well, put your hand this way. I'm afraid I'm going to spill if I do. Do you feel the water? Yeah. yeah, okay. Good. The seeds have to feel the water. Yep. Okay, now since I won't be, I won't be at your house all week, probably, I've got a water for everybody. And you tell the gardener at your house to make sure you're watered and fed each week or each day. There you go. Now, if we wait maybe two weeks, we'll see a little teeny green showing. 
And most of the seeds, when they sprout at first, will look pretty much the same, won't they? And a lot of them come up and then they put two leaves out. But then they grow way different from there. And a sunflower would put out a big stalk like this. And actually, so would okra put out a big stalk like that. A peace plant would put out leaves that look like a little sword. A carrot puts out little leafy leaves, and the carrot's quietly growing under the soil, isn't it? And a morning glory being a flower will put out two, and then it'll put out more, and then it'll put out some buds like this, and then it'll put out its flower, right? So, by by the end of, what kind of seed are you? You have no <laughs> This is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, in case you're still looking for a seat, we have plenty right over here. I do believe that this section wins the attendance award, but I can't pull the pulpit over facing you, so remind me to wave at me if I'm not looking at you enough over there. Good to see you all this morning. What a wonderful day it is when the people of God can gather together to worship and pray and, and sing uh, in one voice uh, the hymns of faith. Um, as we come with an open mind and an open heart to receive the Spirit of God, we are welcome to this time uh, and to this place. Uh, there are um, several things that I want to share with you this morning. Um, it looks like Vacation Bible School is going to be starting tonight. Afterwards, if you want to have your uh, picture taken with me, we'll... Uh, have, this is our selfie part. We'll put the money in Fund D, um, which I want to give an update. Uh, we've had 32 givers so far, just shy of $3,700. Uh, so if you haven't had your opportunity yet to, to make your contribution for the 100 by 100 restroom makeover, please uh, do so either this Sunday or the next, uh, and then uh, we're going to begin things. Uh, so please keep that in mind. Uh, also, I highlighted something on the back of the insert. Uh, next Sunday, after church, there will be an ice cream social and a luncheon. The luncheon first. Um, it, the line at the ice cream will be shorter right when you get there, but luncheon first, then ice cream. Uh, following church next Sunday to celebrate the end of Bible school. So uh, please keep that in mind this week. Bible school does start uh, tonight uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the kinds of things that you'll see. There's a lot of other stuff downstairs that's been transformed, and I think this is the first time I've seen all those plastic accordion uh, dividers pulled out, so there's lots of little spaces down there, and I have to go to the youth room also because I've heard some good things about how that's been decorated, so uh, I'm going to go down there after church. Uh, I do have, um, I do want to uh, point your attention to the prayer list, uh, which has been updated this week, uh, but also some uh, changes uh, in the um, new in our prayers. Jennifer Cross uh, is uh, in Grandview Hospital recovering from surgery, so please keep her in prayer. And uh, I think I mentioned to you last week, uh, uh, Troy Heron's uh, mom had passed away and there was a, a visitation uh, last Tuesday, so please keep that family in your prayers. Uh, Ron Bolander is home uh, following a heart procedure uh, and Doris Barker has moved um, from Reed Hospital to The Springs, uh, which is in uh, Springs Rehab Center, which is in uh, Richmond. 
and then um, uh, I, I got the sad news uh, on Friday, late Friday, from um, Barbara Reynolds that uh, our sweet Ruth Campbell passed away uh, on Friday morning, 105 years old. Um, so she was our oldest member. Is anybody older than that in here today? I, I think all of our kids that are in here today don't equal that. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and the family's gathering, and they're all away, and they're gathering, and arrangements will be made. Um, and I will try to send out a, an email so that you're aware of that when uh, those arrangements are made. Are there any other uh, prayer concerns that we'd like to add this morning? Thank you. Well, please take that uh, list and, and fold it up and, and put it in your pocket. And during the week, remember, uh, remember those who have requested prayer. Remember um, the uh, kids who are here during vacation Bible school as they, as they learn and grow in faith. Um, remember your staff as they seek to serve with you faithfully uh, in the ministry which we are able to conduct here through our congregation. Any other announcements, Beth? Let us worship God. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace I was meant to be. With God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony. 
Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every breath I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Hidden behind the clouds, is a warming sun. Deeper than worry is the persistence of grace. On each side of a wall is a yearning for reconciliation. Our first hymn is 442, the church's one foundation. <laughs> 